goodness with Face, Pat, and Tiz. Positive black news for the week, though. Got that. Everybody should like that. Oh, Here we man. go. So <laughs> we got a founder of a black family-owned nonprofit to give away $50,000 twice a month for 100 years. Yeah. Yamke Muhammad wants to see more black entrepreneurs become successful, so he formed the B-Network group. The company is family-owned and yearns to help black people put their products in the marketplace and make a way to provide for their families. The B Network Group started the company with the core values of contributing to the community and building trust to, through transparency. Niamke knew that $50,000 alone would not get a product into a major grocery store overnight, but he realized it would be the start of, a process, of the process for a Black entrepreneur into becoming an organic household brand. So shout out to them. Uh, I think that's pretty dope, um, helping out Black that's businesses. Dope. So uh, if you want to know about the B Network Group, they're at thebnetworkgroup.org. That's T-H-E, the letter B, networkgroup.org. Um, so yeah, dope. Thank you, Niamke. Appreciate you for looking to, out, my guy. I'm about to hit him up about the gun. Like, come up. You feel me? I, 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 hey, man. I, if, if he, I can use I, a 50 I, grand. Yeah. Put your business plans together, my people, and get to submit. Like I, I say, you know, that, that sounds pretty dope. And who can't even use some startup capital? You did. There you go. Um, so, yeah, man, shout out Neon K. Moving on. Next one. Man, this one right here touched my heart, dude. Uh, Michigan dad rushed into a burning home to save his 18-month-old twin daughters. I saw Ray that. Lucas, a 23-year-old father from East Point, Michigan, is being held a hero after he ran into a burning house to rescue his twin babies. Damn right. Lucas and his girlfriend, Sheanne Brown, had just returned home from a nearby store to buy milk when they were shocked to see that their home was on fire. His mother, who had been watching the 18-month-old babies, was in shock and was panicking outside the door but the babies, Malaysia and Milan, were still inside the burning building. I was speechless. Action took over me, and I ran in the house to get my babies, Luke told CNN. I'm looking at it as a father. I did anything that any other father would do or should do. Even though Lucas said he couldn't see anything aside from flame and smoke inside the house, he managed to get to his daughters by going through the same route to the basement where they were, when he was then able to carry them outside to safety. Lucas also saved his niece as he caught her in his hands when she had to jump through the second story window of the burning building. Jesus Christ. Right, on that damn. Yeah, man. Mm -hmm. um, hate me, damn him and his daughters had to spend five days in the ICU after suffering severe burns and smoke inhalation. Luke had a, um, Lucas had second and third degree burns to his face, eyes, neck, arms, mm -hmm. and he became blind for three days. Meanwhile, the mm -hmm. GoFundMe page has been set up to help the family with their expensive medical bills and ultimately rebuild their lives since they lost their home. The fundraiser initially aimed to raise just 40000 but so far garnered over $450,000. All right. This is a side note, but about that story and... It's something that really hits a nerve with me. Like, in tragic cases like that, they shouldn't have had no medical bills, man. Yeah. You feel me? Like, that's because the medical bills don't go to the medical bills that's getting paid don't go to pay that staff, man. They're doing yeah. the work. So while yeah. like you you dealing with one tragedy, and then you got to recover from that, deal with a, the financial tragedy. Come on, man. Yeah. Like I, I don't, I don't mean to take away from the positive black news. No, you go ahead. Like, like the, the medical shit, the, the, the med this medical industry shit, man. Like, got to get better, man. Because we got people who are being superheroes, putting their life on the line to save their family. They got to turn around and be in debt right. for, for doing a basic human thing, saving your family. The medical industry is more industry than medical. Big facts, bro. Big <laughs> fucking facts, man. Like, it's yeah, one I big racket, yo. They're going to always have this racket. Man, like, this shit, yo. Like. They turn everything into a racket, yo. Like, shit that should just be, like, common decency as humans. Like, 
Uh, it should just be there. Like, let's just do that because it's the right thing but, to do. Nope. But if you change it or whatever, it's going to be some Republican somewhere to say, that's socialism. Now, that's being a good human being. That's, that'd be what I'd be saying, bro. Like, you... I, I'm, I'm all petty. about people doing their thing and, and, you know, make doing what they want to do in life and making themselves feel better and, you know, even gaining financially. But do it got to always be at the expense of everybody else? Like, can't it be, like, a way where you can get yours and other people still... Nah, in capitalism. Feel like, you know, <laughs> it's, it's the basic human needs. Like, Jesus. Nah, in the capitalist society. Not, not here. Not, not. Everything there is a business and everything is a competition. <laughs> No lies detected. That's, that's the sad thing. That's the one thing we all need, and we all end up having to pay. That's why yeah. most of us have debt for medical bills. But I can personally say this: if I owe a medical bill, I guess I'll owe that motherfucker when I die too. Because guess what? If I go to a hospital and die, that's going to be another bill for me. That's a big thing. that I can't pay. <laughs> and ain't that the craziest shit? You mm-hmm. die, and they give you a bill. What the fuck? Nigga, here's your invoice for dying. Sorry, you croak. Now, Nigga, I ain't even asked to be here. You got a death certificate and a death invoice. Nigga, I ain't even asked to be here. I just woke up one day and I was here. You, feel? you know what I'm saying? I didn't, I didn't get that choice. Whatever. That's all I'm prob- saying. Right. If, yeah, if right. I was at a choice of existence, I probably wouldn't pick the one where I just get... I'm, I'm at risk because I got a, a colored different color skin right <laughs> absolutely man i no, again no I lies detected man i mean um, man, man back to the positive black news man no man Keep sometimes stuff news, gotta be said bro you i ain't mad at you man you said what needed to be said bro like you know it's three partners if you got something to speak you speak your speech mm-hmm. yeah, man, man sacrifice whatever he need to to save his family now, damn, he got to turn around. And after he deal with this shit physically, healing physically, which is going to take him a while to heal physically and mentally, he got to put this financial shit on top of that shit. Who, who needs that, man? Not, not that man don't need that, man. That's big fact. Because I, 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 I damn well know, go for me or not, they ain't going to go for me enough to pay for the medical bills, second and third degree, second and third degree burns <clears throat> with the treatment he going to need and his girls going to need. Damn, they ain't going to pay for all that shit. So he's still gonna have that. Yeah. Yeah. He he dead ass right. Mm-hmm. I yeah. Um they want these basketball players to fix history. this damn healthcare system. Like it, it's I feel you okay. You don't want to fix the air system. All right, just fix the healthcare system, man. Healthcare and education should be like basic human needs. Like you should be able to learn, you should be able to get fixed if you're hurt. You do those two things, I think we can figure the rest out as a people. But, like, Jesus Christ, man. The man should be getting the keys to the city and some more shit for saving his babies. And he's out here with a GoFundMe. That's just it. Um, but, yeah. So, shout out to Lucas Brown, man, from Michigan. Man. Shout out, man. That, that's Being a real movie. hero. Right, that's a Superman right there, man. Like, that's go fathers, man. Like, that's that's a, that's a big move. Um, and God bless them babies that you saved. Amen to them being still here. Thank you, thank you for being there, showing up when you did. Um, mm-hmm. But yeah, man. Uh, so on to the next story, I guess. Uh, digital healthcare platform Hugh Ed lands one point six million in funding from Serena Williams and others. Mm. This is from goodblacknews.org. The digital health startup HUED, founded in 2018 by Kimberly Wilson with the aim of connecting patients with Black and Latinx healthcare providers, recently raised mm. $1.6 in cap and seed funding led by women venture capitalists. According to mm. thegrio.com, round participants included Serena Williams, Serena Ventures, Osage Venture Partners, Northwestern Mutual, Black Founders Matter, Gingerbread Capital, and angel investor and health industry leader, Holly Taco. Holly Teco. Um, so shout out to them for getting that funding, man. Um, basically, Hugh Ed is out here making sure we get 
you know, provide us and, and getting our people with people that look like us, because, you know, that is a struggle, um, especially for black women. So I'm not surprised that a black woman, you know, spearheaded this. Um, but yeah, you know, we definitely get treated differently at the doctor. You know, they think we super people. Um, so uh, shout out to them, man. I, I actually like this movement and kind of giving you that option. So if you're not comfortable with the options that you currently have, you can get a more tailored connection. So shout out to Hugh Ed and shout out to Kimberly Wilson. And shout out to all of the donors for uh, looking out. So yeah. Uh, the next one, Cuomo's resignation. New York governor, Quo Mosey, Quozy Mosey, Quocipitus Mosipitus. Um, <laughs> Brother Andrew Cuomo, now that he is retiring, we are about to have New York's first Black woman acting lieutenant governor. Oh, wow. Mm. Yes. Huh. Black woman about to be running thing. You hear me? Mm. Um, New York Senate Majority Leader <coughs> and soon to be acting Lieutenant Governor Andrea Stewart Cousins, who represents Yonkers, is shown. Um, okay. Yonkers. Yes. She is going to be the first Black woman serving as Lieutenant Governor, but it also <coughs> means she will be, it will be the first time the state is led by two women. So Ooh. the Senate Majority Leader Andrea Stewart Cousins is going to leave her post to become acting lieutenant governor once current lieutenant governor Kathy Hochul assumes her new leadership position in Albany, the first time the Empire State will have a woman governor. So that's from news1.com, and that's dope. So you got a woman running this a state with a black <laughs> woman right behind her, and you know how things go. So you never know. But, yeah, shout out mm -hmm. to the ladies. Shout out to Andrea Stewart Cousins. I, I felt some, I felt back I felt, felt weird about the whole Cuomo thing or whatever because I wasn't sure. I still got to re read up on it or whatever because I, yeah, I don't know what he's doing. I don't know exactly what he's doing. I know they said some it's some allegations <laughs> of like some uh, sexual women, harassment and stuff, but sexual harassment with women and stuff. I'm gonna say this, man. Well, if he did it, I mean, this is what it, I honestly feel most times. If you're not, okay, uh, fuck, Tiz Tate, this is how I'm going to say it. Usually, if you're not a person who's actually harassing women and doing these things, and if you're not a dude that is a straight dick, usually these things don't get put on you. Most mm -hmm. people that get this put on them are doing something <laughs> Maybe not the actual sexual stuff, but they're doing something to the woman that makes them feel that crazy. That that like, and I don't mean like crazy in love or nothing, like not those situations, but like, what did you do? Why mm -hmm. these women don't like you like that? What happened? And I ain't saying that them doing them sexual harassment allegations, if they are false, is correct. Because that's some bullshit too. Like people, I think people who filed them false claims, they should be prosecuted. Under the same type of uh, penalty, because you, you're you're ruining you're somebody's ruining life, and there's nothing that 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 retraction or that verdict is uh -huh. going to do to take that back, get that back. So I also don't think that's right. But what I am mm -hmm. saying is, what I'm noticing is when shit start coming out, and the truth start coming out on a lot of these famous people, or a lot of these politicians and entertainers, and st that type of thing. Nine out of ten of them seem to have come back with something crazy that they did that sparked this, if that makes sense. Uh -huh. Like, it's always some wild-ish that, okay, yeah, but this one thing won't true, but these three, four, five, and six was, what the hell was you doing? Why would you, why, like, you know what I mean? So I, I'm going to say this. He gone, we got women running things, and a black woman is the lieutenant governor of New York for the first time in their history. So shout out to that. Uh, back Cuomo. Um, yeah, moving on. I ain't even need to dwell on him. Um, <laughs> uh, last story. D.L. Hughley and Ricky Smiley are nominated by, for the syndicated radio personality of the year. 
Um, mm. They follow in the rich, rich, rich tradition of radio excellence established by Urban One founder Kathy Hughes. So Urban One is beaming with pride after the two of the Black-owned media company's top talents have received prestigious nominations for awards, recognizing their work in radio broadcasting. D.L. Hughes and Rick McSmiley have each been nominated for Network Syndicated Personality of the Year for their epi epi eponymous Ooh. radio so Ooh. Yeah, I, I, eponymous radio shows uh, as a part <laughs> of the upcoming National Association of Broadcast to a 2021 Marconi Radio Awards. So uh, shout out to them brothers, man. Um, two legends in the game. Um, Two dudes that have been in this game, this radio and media game for a long time now, and both are just giants in it. And I rock with both of them. So shout out to them, mm -hmm. man. Salute, Kings. Appreciate y'all. Respect, black man. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And job, that is man. this week's positive black news. Well, with the end of that brings us to the beginning of one of my favorite segments. 